dystopian times. We've been following the situation in Arkansas where the Republican legislature, they passed a bill banning gender affirming care for trans youth, which is medically necessary. And this law was horrible. So there was a lot of pressure exerted on the governor to veto that bill. And nobody thought that he would actually do that because he previously signed a bill into law banning trans athletes in high school from participating in school sports. So we thought there's no way that this is going to happen. But he did. He actually got pressure, vetoed the bill. Um, And he went on Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson was uh, grilling him about this. It was a disgusting segment. But there's a bit of an update to the story. So after he vetoed that bill, well, the Republican legislature overrode his veto. And the law banning gender affirming care for trans youth was set to go into effect on the 28th of this month. But we got an intervention here, at least temporarily, and this is really good news. So this is from NPR and OPB. A federal judge blocks Arkansas ban on trans youth treatments uh, just in the nick of time. So let me read a little bit of the story before we discuss. So a federal judge on Wednesday temporarily blocked enforcement of Arkansas's ban on gender affirming treat gender confirming treatments for transgender youth while a lawsuit challenging the prohibition proceeds. The American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit in May asking U.S. District Judge Jay Moody in Little Rock on to strike down the law that made Arkansas the first state to forbid doctors from providing gender confirming hormone treatment, puberty blockers, or sex reassignment surgery to anyone under 18 years old or from referencing them to other providers for such treatment. The ACLU sought to preliminary sought the preliminary injunction while its lawsuit proceeded. To pull this care midstream from these patients or minors would cause irreparable harm, Moody said. And there's a really great Vice documentary about a bill being pushed in Mississippi that's relatively similar. There's some differences, though. So the law had been set to take effect July 28th. So at least for now, there's a pause on this. But I just want to kick it over to the panel. Thoughts on this? I have a huge problem with all of this. Um, This is a major civil liberties problem. I just want to say, like, the idea when I was reading this, and we see this in other in other ways, but the bottom line is they don't like trans people and they don't like trans people and they don't want to support this. And that's what it's about. Now, they're going to try to sell it like it's some sort of like we're doing it in the best interest of the children, because if they're not 18, they could change their minds. And this isn't safe. That's a bunch of crap. So it's taking what is really a parent's right away from a parent, because as far as I know, anybody that's a minor had to get their parental consent. There's a lot of steps you have to jump through. It's not like you just go in as a minor and your doctor starts giving you hormones. So it's yeah. you already need parental consent. So the idea that they're trying to interfere with that, um, I find infuriating, like regardless of what the issue is. And they're only doing it, let, make no mistake, because they don't like trans people. That's really what this is. It's we're just becoming a pawn. It's a political pawn. That's what it ends up feeling like. We're just a political mm-hmm. pawn to continue like it seems like abortion is a political pawn a lot of the times. And then we had gay rights. And now that that's not the hot topic, that's not the hot thing to use as a pawn. It's us. And it's horrifying. I can't imagine what it would have been like to be able to avoid the, the surgery, for example, that I had to get post 18 or just simply knowing about trans issues. But we're going backwards instead. Yeah. And it's horrifying. Yeah, there, there was a portion of time after uh, marriage equality became the law of the land with Obergefell. There was like this huge uh, shift in with the LGBTQ plus community towards really trying to have more visibility for trans people um, and, and trans rights. And then I, I that optimism that I felt like five, six years ago has diminished because we absolutely are going backwards, as Lumi said. And I want to draw everyone's attention to the fact that Just in 2021, there have been more anti-trans bills passed or or introduced into uh, legislatures across the country than the last six years. So this is, as Lumi said, it is a political ploy. And what's really nefarious about this whole situation is that this is being done under the guise of protecting trans youth. So everyone, everyone knows that like... Oh, it's it's hurting them. And, and as as the doctor said, who was quoted in here, it's irreparable damage. It the is. rate of suicidality among trans youth is so high in comparison with their cis peers. And to think that they would be denied this treatment or in Mississippi, for example, in the event that law passed, um, it would have criminalized doctors who tried to treat trans youth. It, it's just <laughs> the fact that this is this is the political football that Republicans are using now 
is incredibly disgusting and disingenuous. And it's not just in the United States, in the United Kingdom. Perhaps the situation might be even worse. Cab, I'm not sure if you have um, uh, any personal stories to share, any more insight into this, but could you talk a little bit about the situation in um, in the UK? Yeah, I was just looking up something because I, I remember this. So um, uh, a transgender woman actually fled to New Zealand as a refugee and got granted residency because they said, being transgender in the UK um, is so dangerous because um, there's um, a gaming channel called Easy Allies and um, one of their personalities one of their personalities just came out as trans and they were talking about um, the healthcare they received to become trans and as bad as it is what you, what you're saying right there the experience they described was something I've never heard about in in the UK it was so sensitive and so nice and um, I will say in the US it's obviously really bad and. What it feels like is this culture war that is just ripping stuff straight from the 1980s about gay people. Like, you know, the, tra the trans bathroom stuff is like, oh, you don't you don't want to use the same bathroom as X, Y and Z because they might rape you. Essentially, they said the exact same stuff about gay people in the 1980s yeah. and 1990s. It's actually taking that language and using it again. It feels like the exact same thing. Good now, in, in, in the UK, what's even worse is that Tony Blair, you know, awful, awful person has become more influential in labor again because of Keir Starmer, these more centrist labor people taking power. And he told them, don't get involved with trans rights. It's just culture war. Like no one cares about that. You're just going to mm -hmm. alienate voters and stuff. Even though I was looking at some polling data before, which is quite surprising considering we demonize trans people in the UK so much, is that a lot of people are actually supportive of trans identity. There's other issues which are kind of like hit or miss, but largely the British public are. Now, it's just very frustrating that we can't even get a left wing party to talk about these things. And it's it's a stereotype that's true. White liberal women are some of the worst transphobes in the UK. Obviously, JK mm. Rowling, you know about. But every Guardian column, columnist or stuff and stuff like that, they're all writing these awful articles. So, like, I feel really mm. bad for people in the UK because at least in the US, yeah, I, I know it's awful because you have these absolute zealots in the Republican Party, the Christian right, who are like uncompromising. And I just made a video before I came on about the new civil war in the Republican Party because they're having a fight over, do they accept transgender Republicans? And the religious right say, no, it's like degeneracy. Whereas the more like, I guess, people who aren't as religious are saying, if they're conservative, who cares? And now in the, in the UK, we don't have that debate anywhere. It's actually like, don't talk about it. It will just alienate the voters. And because of this push, because Manchester and traditionally working class areas went to the Tories for the first time, it's like this pers perspective that or perception that these guys who Labour lost are inherently like racist or bigoted. So the way you win them back is don't talk about that stuff because they think the like the loony left under Corbyn mm -hmm. who did talk about all this stuff, rights of minorities, rights of refugees, trans people, like really great stuff. That was too alienating rather than looking at the bigger problem. It was just this complete overwhelming demonization by the press. So I would say at least in America, you have like visibility for trans rights and trans issues. And just Joe Biden saying this, I know it doesn't mean much coming from someone like him, but mm -hmm. Joe Biden talking about transgender rights is like absolutely huge. Like, right. and that's where I think in, in America, you can build on that because imagine how many old people who love Joe Biden are being exposed to this stuff for the first time. Where in the UK, we can't even get a 50 year old labor leader to even acknowledge this stuff. So, like, I feel like in the US, it's a, it's a massive uphill battle and it's part of the culture war. But, like, hopefully, because we've seen the success with the gay rights movement, eventually, I'm not saying it's like total equality, but you got there in the end where it's more accepted. So, I'm hoping with America, especially, just this acknowledgement from at least one major political party of these people and the issues facing them is really going to help the fight for trans rights. We're in the UK, I don't really know where we go because our left wing party is being totally destroyed from the inside. It literally feels like some sort like of MI6 plot to eradicate the Labour Party. That's how mm. disastrous it's going here. So, yeah, it is doom and gloom everywhere. But I feel like I'm a bit more hopeful about America in general, despite like the vicious backlash. Was it like 30 different states passing or trying to pass laws against trans people? Like It's pretty, pretty crazy. I read in that article. It's an absurd amount. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's at least dozens, um, not all of them have passed. And the reason why there was so much fear around these laws is because 
Well, it, like with the United States, there's always this domino effect where when one state does something, other states tend to follow suit because, you know, then all of the controversy kind of diminishes a little bit. So, you know, with, with Arkansas being the first, when we all thought Mississippi was going to be the first, it's like, okay, this is now law. They they did it, and now, you know, that state is going to bear the brunt of the backlash, and now other states will follow suit with little to no controversy. And there's a lot going on in the media, so it doesn't get covered. And it's frustrating. Like, I'm glad that you brought that up, Cab, about the, you know, the Labour Party not wanting to touch it, because that actually is an area of optimism for me, that the Democratic Party, for the most part, I think they need to fight harder for trans issue, for trans rights and LGBTQ+, plus. generally speaking. They, they should be fighting way harder to push the Equality Act. I mean, the, the fact that it's still um, just kind of thrown under the bus and still, you know, this, this controversial thing is really frustrating. But, you know, it is so super nefarious that the Republican Party chose to capitalize on this issue. And and what's what they're doing is they're, they're, they're truly preying on people's ignorance because there's this assumption that, well, you know, trans non-binary people, they just all of a sudden came out of nowhere when they've always existed, but now they have heightened visibility. So, you know, now that people are becoming aware and less ignorant and they know somebody who's trans or non-binary, you know, they're, they're seizing this opportunity. And for me, part of my optimism and perhaps a little bit of naivete was thinking, well, you know what, since, you know, we're all part of the LGBTQ plus community, these issues like you kind of use the same logic. Right. But it's it's not that simple. So for me, for example, conversations that I've had with family members about uh, being gay, I, I'm now having to rehab those conversations about transgender issues and and non-binary and it's it's really frustrating to me but at the same time it, it's part of the process that is you can't avoid it but when you have also you know policymakers trying to use this group as a weapon which is the most marginalized um in society at least when it pertains to trans and non-binary youth it's it's just morally reprehensible um i wanted to give amy a chance to jump in here yeah, there's um, in my state and my home state of West Virginia, there was a law that passed. It's not just medical treatment, but it's also denying trans kids the right to compete in sports and taking right. away their livelihood on top of denying them rights to um, medical uh, treatments, I think is the reason why this is going to be irreparable and, and irreversible. There's no other way that you could really attack a trans kid by making their life in school even more difficult if they can't even try to forge friendships or find some sense of camaraderie in a sports team that might, you know, not be bigoted or would accept them and making it as difficult for uh, trans uh, children is absolutely it's morally bankrupt it it is criminal especially because of course i'm going to bring this back to housing the amount of of uh of uh experience if experience hatred that trans kids uh witness or experience in their home leads to a higher rate of homelessness so yeah when kids are kind of kicked out of their own home and what services are available to them through outreach programs with homeless programs that does help them to maintain control of their identity and offers them affirming treatments that the state is then denying to them. Then what options or uh, available recourse are you leaving them? And how is this going to be to the detriment of their entire uh, mental health down the line, especially whenever you are in such a tender uh, age where your your brain is still very much developing. There are plenty of empirical analyses that have been conducted and research that has been conducted that shows that there is a long term effect that you experience as a child if you are trans and you are subjected to homelessness, among other things. So just kind of taking that one step further into the equation and and uh, can the the risks that these children experience and that the state is only making it worse for them by imposing this violence onto them is absolutely, like you said, morally reprehensible.